with uh, any of you got Chris you need some of these um, just try to reconsolidate um, where we are we've had some we've missed some different gatherings we've missed some of these also and sometimes it can be difficult to um, f you know keep pace to follow it, it could be difficult to keep pace and follow anyway because like I said that's <laughs> six classes in two weeks which will from now on the rest of my life make me laugh <laughs> um, <clears throat> and uh, to do that, I want to just kind of uh, set forth some of the basic things that we talked about. This, this uh, study on Abraham and Isaac, and we'll eventually move into others, uh, came from the prodigal son and then from... Exodus 12, then Cain and Abel. Am I correct? Did I leave anything out? Okay. You that have sharp minds. Mike. And um, <clears throat> there was something important about all that. And that thing wasn't just some thought of bantering around, not that anybody's been doing this, I'm just trying to, you know, bantering around the name the firstborn. We need to know what that's all about because every one of these studies is, is dealing with it deeply and including uh, Abraham and <clears throat> his dealing with his son who hasn't come up yet since uh, where we're located in Genesis 15 but will <clears throat> and remember and please don't go here in your mind and think of the firstborn as the first one with uh, the first one by birth what physical thank you keep it up um, it's not talking about birth order it's talking about what God, his view of the firstborn, what, what is the, and may I even say the father, the father's view of the firstborn, and, and a whole lot of this uh, stuff in Abraham, <clears throat> I mean, his, his name, both names, Abram and Abraham, have father in it. Uh, that's significant. And the whole dealing is about a son, but not just like many people would assume, okay, this story is about um, the trials of a man who wanted a son and finally God did a miracle and blessed him. <laughs> I mean, it can be read that way, and it's not that. Just like the prodigal son story isn't the story of a kid who messed up and went out and then he got a second chance and God said, I forgive you and everything's clear, you know. It's not that. Just like Exodus is not about delivering Israel. It's about God getting his firstborn, and his firstborn was very well, I mean, we, it'll, it'll do it here with Abraham, but it was very well spelled out, to, in my opinion, not by me, but in the scriptures, um, in Exodus 12, where the first thing God says is, you know, go tell Pharaoh, let my firstborn go. And then the whole story is about firstborns, you know. The whole thing is, if you don't let my firstborn, singular, go, I will take all of your firstborns, if you will. Plural. And... Um, these are issues of the heart of the Father. I mean, they are. Every story is, you know, we, we quote that scripture, I, I think it's in 1 John, um, probably the first chapter. 
We write these things unto you that we might have fellowship with you and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son. And so to me, that's one view. Let me write it and then I'll say something here real quick. So I've got a circle with an F standing for the Father and one across from him directly across uh, with an S representing the sun and then one dropping down um, between the two and lower that says us. And John says, I write these things to you. I'm writing to you whatever, whatever you read that I've written to you. <laughs> is about fellowship that the Father has with his Son. It's a fellowship here. And then we, uh, we see that as, as something that we enter into in our present state. But truly our fellowship is with the Father in a sense. Not truly our fellowship is I don't even know how to say it because I see us seeing that as something that we're all just happily together. But this thing, this father-son thing is eternal. It's eternal. It is, it is, you know, some people call Adam and Eve the first family, but first family was father and son. And that was spiritual, and it was real, and it was full of life, and it was full of love, and it was full of movement. And from everything I can tell before the foundation of the world, it wasn't built on a book. I, I'm just saying. I'm just, I'm just saying. You know, that's why I, I believe that's one reason why Jesus is called the Word. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. Well, God who? God the Father. And the Word was God. So now we've got the word, but it's not, no longer just the scriptures. It is the fulfillment of all scriptures. Don't you believe Jesus is the fulfillment of the old covenant? And he's the fulfillment of that. And, he's, and, and uh, for the Father to truly be satisfied won't be for us to jump in on a conversation between the Father and Son and start trying to, to understand it. It comes with realizing <clears throat> that this is not this this us down here this us is uh, is doesn't have it all together doesn't know everything doesn't uh, isn't on um, a track to gain something between them but rather the the greater starts in my opinion the greater starts with entering into the Father's heart pertaining to his son. Okay? And um, so we go, okay, well, I want to learn, I want to learn the Bible. Good. That, you know, that's one reason why these classes, okay? I want you to learn the Bible. But the Bible won't do you any good if once you start getting a grasp of just the scriptures and what they says and what this book is about and da 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 da, um, if you're not um, setting your course to grasp the Son as understood by the Father, because that's an eternal relationship. Remember, this is eternal. This is this is what has always been. We make it about uh, um, temporal things because our lives are temporal. So we want to enter into something like that, um, maybe for the benefit of us. But how about, how about, how about being hid? What I mean by that is not in the big show. <laughs> just, just hide. You know the example that been used for years and is the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit communing as it were around the throne and the 
person being quiet instead of in there going, hey, can you help me with this? And can you help me with this? And Father, help me with this. But to be almost unseen and heard among them. I mean, what can we possibly say to, to impress them? It's ridiculous, because this has been forever. And then just say, Holy Spirit, you're the one supposed to teach me Christ, okay? So you have to, you have to factor in the Holy Spirit. Father, <clears throat> but see, the Father doesn't teach you Christ in the way that the Holy Spirit teaches you Christ. Can anybody see that? Anybody understand that the Father doesn't teach you Christ the same way the Holy Spirit teaches you Christ? The Father, the, remember the example that we used, we're still in chapter 15 of uh, of Genesis that Abraham starts going whereby shall I know that I shall inherit and and that means the land and the son give me something to give me assurance I just I just love the scriptures I just love the reality that the Spirit of God brings with that because the father takes Abraham and he takes him out to a place and he says, look up and behold the stars. For if you can number them, so shall thy seed be. Well, you can't number them, so stop trying to figure everything out piecemeal. Know their heart. And then he says, and then the scripture says, and Romans 4, that, well, it says it also there in Genesis 15, that this shall be counted to you for righteousness. But it doesn't say the stars. It says God will be counted to you for righteousness. Check it out. It's, you see in his heart by seeing, as it were, into his face when he looks at the stars. And he is just like, yes, 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 instead of this penny any earth and our little attempts. And I'm not trying to disparage anybody. I'm just trying to be real. Our little attempts to please God and stay in the race. <laughs> we know how important that is. You know, <laughs> You're not going to stay in the race if your heart isn't there. If it's in the wrong place, if it's on you, you're going to drop out of the race if you look like you're going to lose and then start your own race. But he's looking and he's, he's seeing something of the heart of God toward his son. And Abraham said, you know, whereby shall I know? How will I know that I'll get the seed? That's fine. Thank you. It's counted of me for righteousness. I would like more than a promise. Amen? Come on. More than a promise. Just something that's a promise, but no real life yet. No real son. Man. I can't go with that. See? I can't go with that. We can, we can deceive ourselves. We can go, okay, you know, all the promises, how's it go? All the promises of the book, in the book are mine. I don't even what's, what, know what to say. I wish I could say something profound. <laughs> but that's, that's not in the Bible. You know, and, and all the promises, see? For us, here's what we do with the promises. We hear the promises were to Abraham and his seed, <clears throat> and we hear that, and we go, okay. And so some genius goes through the Bible and cuts it all up and pulls out every positive promise that he can find in there and makes his own Bible. The precious promises, you know, and it's like, is there anything negative in there? No. Wouldn't want to put that. Anything about us being dead? No. <laughs> no. You know. Uh, anything about Jesus being dead? Oh, yeah, because that's where they all come from. We're all blessed because he died, and that's great. He died, and we're the blessed ones. You know, and it's, 
<clears throat> it seems right. I mean, you know, you in a Christian bookstore and you see the, all the precious promises of the Bible, and you go, oh, you know, instead of, you know what? I want the Lord. I want actual Lord. I don't. I don't want to memorize. I don't want to be a Pharisee. I don't want to memorize all of the promises and live off of that while I am literally ripping apart and throwing away the rest of the Bible that talks a lot about affliction being our workers. You know, well, you just, you know, when he wrote that book, well, buddy, you just took away all your workers. <laughs> you know what I mean? You did. You literally pulled them all out. They worked for us, it says. 2 Corinthians 4, last couple of verses. A far more exceeding and eternal word of, weight of glory while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. So that's where I'm trying to go with this. This is eternal with the Father and the Son. This is, this is going to be around <laughs> a long time, which means forever and ever and ever. And um, um, you know, I just you know, I just see uh, in the studies that we've done. I just see in the prodigal son. I just see the father's heart. Does anybody remember that? Remember when the father is do blessing the prodigal and he's at his worst as it were and he's this and that but he doesn't know that it's the son that he's after the father is after but he keeps seeing the father blessing him but he knows that this is not right I have royally messed up and he's treating me like not just I'm forgiven but like I'm royalty you know what I mean he's getting the ring and the robe and all of that kind of stuff like I'm I'm the apple of the Father's eye. Well, you're not, and I'm not, but the, but the seed is, and he's in us. And then the Father takes him, which we've seen other examples of this. The Father takes him to the altar, though it doesn't call it an altar. I'm telling you over and over and over, we're going to see that it's always an altar that the firstborn goes to. It's always. And he takes him there. And it's a similar thing to, to Genesis 15 where the father's looking at, the father's seeing one son. All those stars, he's only seeing one son. It's just the magnitude of that one, you know. And he's beholding one. And we're trying to figure it all out. If, if you can number it, so shall thy seed be. Well, I can't. He goes, okay, well, then it's going to be my seed, not yours. It'll be my seed. And, and if it was you had it your way, Abraham, if you had it your way, Lot would have been it. Eliezer would have been it. Ishmael would have been it. And even Isaac, when he was born, would have been it. And he's not. We'll get to that. Or will we? <clears throat> but we have some here that understand that. So if I'm not around that, you know, next, you know, if I don't live to be 107, we have others who can tell you what that means. <clears throat> but then in Exodus, you just realize. You know, you have to realize, you have to see, but you have to, you have to look for his heart. And so you get the same picture again, and it is the father. And the father says, let my firstborn go. But it doesn't say the father said that. So how can we assume that that's the father? Because he said it's my firstborn. <laughs> you know, but we go, well, I don't know. It doesn't really say that. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Could be the Holy Spirit. Could be a holy angel. You know, I'm just telling you, this rises up in me so deep 
that it just hurts my head when I think of the things that we say and think that are so against this relationship and it's us trying to force our way into it. Just hide, just, just say, I, I don't want anything, you know, go into the throne room. I don't want anything. I just want to sit and maybe be hidden over here and just listen to how y'all relate because I have a feeling there's nothing like the way Christians relate. Can I get amen? amen. Good, because I couldn't get any of those in Holland. <laughs> Lord, help me to remember when I'm in Holland to say, do you understand what I'm saying? Instead of amen. <laughs> All right. So, let's see how this goes. Again, we're going back a little bit here. I mean, we did. And the Lord's taking us on a great journey. Um. Galatians 2.20, you know it, but I am crucified with Christ. Okay, so we go, well, I'm out of the picture. Nevertheless, I live. Yay, I'm back. <laughs> Yet not I, it's Christ. Oh, I'm gone again. You know, he is determined to form Christ in you. Amen. I mean, this is his heart. This is the father. That's his son. I mean, that's what it says in Romans 8, 28, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> My mind ain't working. But, but um, whom he called, he predestinated to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Well, the firstborn folks, in the, in the truest case of that, but even in the shadow, and we haven't really dealt with it because we haven't had a lot of, up to this point, we haven't had a lot of brothers. We had this, the, the uh, elder son. Um, we had Israel, but not the firstborn in uh, Exodus 12. We had Cain and Abel. But we haven't had a lot of brethren. We haven't seen what that means and, the, and how God views that. And, and it's, you know, it's not a teaching and it's not a doctrine. It's not a teaching and doctrine in his mind. So if it becomes that down here, we've left the heart of God. Does that sound mean to y'all? <laughs> but it's true. We've left the heart of God. I don't want to leave the heart of God. I want to pursue the heart of God. You know? <clears throat> and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. And you will see that there actually really is, in all of the stories that we've done and will do, there is a faith. And Romans 4 starts bringing that out. I mean, it grows from there. I mean, if you really want it, try James. But it evolves. The faith evolves. It's not just a life I now, the life I now live in the flesh, I live by this faith. But it is the life I now live in this flesh, I live by the life I now live in the flesh, which is Christ. But there is a faith. There is. And there's a faith walk. <clears throat> who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Okay, so, very familiar scriptures. But this is, this is talking, and, and so is all of Galatians about Abraham, right? I mean, isn't it just packed with Abraham and Ishmael and the whole thing? And, um, and this is leading up to that. I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness, it was counted unto you for righteousness. What was? He believed God. He didn't believe the stars. He believed what he saw in God's heart 
and the way that he responded and that what he said was, how shall I know? Here's how you'll know. And, and Abram believed God, not the star. He believed God. He said, look at how he is. Um, uh, you know, the, the father made a covenant with his son and he put him on the throne. My throne, oh God, is forever and ever. That should do something in us. I'm doing something in me right now. But that should do something. The father made a covenant with his son. And Abram maybe is looking partially at that and going, this thing ain't going anywhere. In his, uh, if I look out here in the stars, I can't count them, so I lose. Amen. But if I look here in the Father's heart and see with the Father's eyes, you can't lose because he's made a covenant with his son that will be forever. And he's the firstborn among many. <clears throat> and then he's talking about if, if, righteous, if righteousness come, then Christ is dead in vain. So when the father's looking, he surely is seeing the death of his son also. The Romans really spells that out. And he's seeing this is, this is, when this happens, this is the fulfillment of everything. If, when he, if he sees the many stars and Christ being in us, it's not people that believe in Christ in you. <laughs> like, well, what about me? Well, what about you or me? What about us? Why is it always going to be what about us? It's the father's view of his son and the firstborn and the identity of the firstborn will always be based on a spirit that is willing to lay down its life for the worst, even though he's the best, and say, and not fight it, and not go, well, this ain't fair, or I'm better than that person, and why are they doing this to me? And this couldn't be, you know, this can't be the Lord. <laughs> I got news for you. Many times when we're pointing at stuff and saying this can't be the Lord, it is the Lord. Trying to get his firstborn out of us, but we won't give him the firstborn. Well, here, I'll give you Jesus of Nazareth. Will that be okay? And you go, no. I'll give you Isaac before he died. No, before he went to the altar. No, 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 and no, and never, 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 okay? Because the Father, because the Father is bound together with his Son. How does it say that? I, I preached on it once. <laughs> what? said it right. I don't know how. The father's heart is bound up with his son. It really is. It is way greater than we could ever imagine. It is as eternal as that distance and that distance and trying to measure them. It is, it is the very heart of the father and it is the very heart of the son to be the firstborn to the father, not just to us, but he is the firstborn among many, but he's not doing that first and foremost for everybody else. I mean, yes, that's a, that comes with it. That's why it's the second commandment, not the first. Right? Love the Lord thy God, and then your neighbor. But if you're not loving the Lord thy God, you know, well, I did, I did something good for somebody the other day. Really? Well, you're just a rock of Gibraltar, aren't you? <laughs> you know, standing, standing firm, aren't you? Where is the Father's honor as a father? Isaiah, right? Isn't that in Isaiah? Somebody? You know? If I am a father, where is my what? It's in Malachi. Whoa. You don't even know Malachi. You don't even want me to talk about Malachi. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
I mean, if we're still just scraping to get out of Genesis 15, you know, you're, you're safe. Don't worry, you know. Well, you don't need to be there until you've gone through some things. It's not, that's, Malachi is not for someone who hasn't uh, grasped certain things so that he can understand what that book really is about to the Father's heart. But see, we, we, gotta, we gotta start really getting serious about this thing of the Father's heart. We do, we got to, if we don't, you know, Anybody remember what I shared about Noah and the father? And he said, I grieve me. You know, I, I'm sorry that I made you. One translation says, I'm sorry that I made you. You grieve me. It grieved him to his heart. We just read over that and move right along. Well, it must be because everybody sinned or Adam and Eve sinned or all the stuff that's wrong. The stuff is wrong because they've missed something of the Father's heart, and it is. So there's recent sharings on that particular thing. So when you compare this with Genesis 15, what I mean is Galatians 2.20, when you compare this with Genesis 15 and looking at the stars, then Galatians is saying that, and this is in verse 21, righteousness that was re re imputed to Abraham was understood by him to be on the basis of death. Galatians 2.20, righteousness therefore then comes by um, not just on being too old and inadequate because we're you know i think we're more in a mood now to to be willing in our weakness to let him become our strength are we or is that my imagination does that seem seem kind of like we're moving there and that's good that's a good thing but this is saying you know the galatians 2 20 doesn't say when you are so weak uh, right now i know kind of know what that feels like um that you let his life come out of you. But Galatians 2.20, neither is, neither is uh, the book of James or really even uh, Romans 4. They're not, they're not. They're not letting it go at just weakness and inability and what were some of the things? Oh, too old or too inadequate, but on the basis of being crucified with Christ. I had this down and I really, I'm going to read it, Romans 4. <laughs> well, you need to see Romans 4 is all about Abraham. It's not about anybody else other than how this affects us. Do you understand the, the, the storyline is pure Abraham. And if I read further down and find out it's not, I'll repent. All right, <clears throat> Romans 4, verse 1. What shall we say then that Abraham our father as pertaining to the flesh hath found? For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. See, there it is. Abraham believed God. It didn't say he believed the stars. Because we're always all wrapped up in that. I mean, it's like God walks over here and opens up the stars, and we walk over there with him, and we kind of bump him out of the way and go, ooh, you know, we're, we're all after the, the deep, cool stuff, you know. Get out of the way, Father. I can't see what you're trying to show me. I am what I'm trying to show you. He believed God. Abraham didn't do that. He didn't knock him out of the way. He stood there and apparently... He looked at the reaction of the Lord, and he said, as long, get this, as long as it is my firstborn son in you, you have nothing to worry about. He's looking at his face and going, I can't count that, so my seed ain't going to be that, but I can look into his heart, into his face, and I can see this is secure but it's not secure based on me and my good works. Isn't that what Galatians, I mean, uh, 
Romans 4 is talking about. It's not based on my good works. For if Abraham, this is still verse 2, for if Abraham were justified by our works, he have whereof to glory, but not before God. See that? There it is. Not before God. You know? It's like, ooh, you know, there goes Jupiter, here goes Mars, you know. And God's going, how old are you, seven? Anyway. <laughs> we're, we're finding things to boast in, but it's not after God. It's after our attempts to comprehend things that, you know, I mean, our first, our first, interest should be in him, not what he shows us. And he is showing us something, but he's not teaching us something. He's showing us his heart. And he's showing us where his concern is. And that's undeniable. Because Abraham believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness. But if we focus on some bright, shiny stuff, then not after God, you know, not, not before God. For what saith the scripture, Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned for grace, but of debt. So what is, what is possibly the work here? Because it's sticking with the Abraham story. The work is trying to count all the stars. You know, well, he said, so shall thy seed be. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine, what, eight hundred and ninety-nine. Or one, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> Are these things moving, Lord? <laughs> you mean there's some on the other side I hadn't seen yet? Yeah, there's way more that you you can't shove it all in your mind, but you can shove, as it were, His heart into your heart, yes. not yes. not my heart. But your heart, not my view, looking at stars, but your view, and let that do the work in me. Let that give assurance. Verse 3, for what saith the scripture, Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Okay, so how does he justify the ungodly? It's the death of the firstborn. It's the death, it's not just the death of Jesus. If we make it that, then we're not going to be uh, firstborn among many brethren. We're just going to be Christians. There is an important aspect of relating to the firstborn that brings you in unto him. And so if you're not that, you're Israel just wanting to be delivered from everything. But if you're that, then the firstborn lives in you. And you're giving the father your firstborn, the firstborn, his firstborn. And he's going, this is what I want. And, you know, over here, these guys are, you know, they're building the altars and the tabernacle and all that stuff, and that's fine, but you do know Hebrews says that all that was just a shadow. Yeah. We have an altar that they are not. Yeah, they know not of. <laughs> Even as David, oops, it isn't all about Abraham. I made a mistake. See, I don't know everything. Even as David also describeth the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without work, saying, Blessed are those whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. Okay, so we go, praise God, I want to be the man that he will not impute sin. Well, the man he will not impute sin is called his son and he puts you in his son. There, see, this is early in Romans. Five, six, seven, 
all of that is moving into and moving toward a reality of oneness with the firstborn. But if we just claim oneness, then we don't even know who we're of. I have oneness with Jesus, okay? Uh, in Belgium, I taught, um, well, I taught one night, and then the next day, and we had to drive back to Holland after I got through four sessions, five altogether, on the lamb. And I was, I was just trying to plow the ground where we would, you know, you see Book of Revelation, you see Jesus, uh, First Peter, Jesus was a lamb slain before the foundation of the world. You, you begin to realize that, and you know this better than most, but you, you know that, that that was his nature. And I said, if we all re relate to his, his name, Jesus. I said, when was Jesus given that name? At his birth on the earth. Is that the first time he got it? Yep, because it says Savior. But he was lamb in nature without being a savior before the foundation of the world. Anyway, so I went off on that and it was real good and the Lord blessed. But so at the end, we went back to the house where we were staying, gathered up our stuff, loaded it up in a car and, and um, Bia and uh, Miriam and Vera and Francine and um, Simon was there because he drove us. And Deb says, oh, let's get a picture. Let's get a picture. And uh, so they all huddle up and they're all excited for what the Lord's been sharing. So, G so, so Deb says, say Jesus. And they went, no. And they said, we're all kind of what? And they said, we're supposed to say slaughtered lamb. And I thought, that's going to look funny on your mouth, but I'd rather you say that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> verse 9, cometh this blessedness upon the circumcision only or upon the uncircumcision also? Remember, circumcision was started, was initiated by God with Abraham and his seed. Okay, it, it wasn't a Jewish rite. You, you want proof of that? I'll give you proof of it. Ishmael got cir circumcised. Did you know that? Ishmael was circumcised. I think he was 11 or 13. <clears throat> and just because, you know, and, and see that's used by the writers in the New Testament. Just because you say you're of Israel doesn't mean you're of Israel. Where's the firstborn? Where's the circumcision? Where's the death? Where's Gilgal? Where's, where's the whole movement of the altar throughout the history of Israel? For we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. How was it then reckoned? When he was in circumcision or in uncircumcision? Not in circumcision. So it was reckoned to him because it was true of the firstborn. It's reckoned to him. How do you reckon yourself dead? You reckon yourself dead with the firstborn. But if you keep saying Jesus, you're going to miss a huge part of what the Father's heart. It's just going to be Jesus came and Jesus did this for us. And, you know, praise God and we're not going to go to hell and that's wonderful. And is everybody happy? And yes, you know, yeah. Sure. 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 When you say you're missing a part, you say Jesus, that's because Jesus takes us back to Jesus of Nazareth, the original guy, and the firstborn is something more the Father's heart of the eternal relationship. Yes. Is, that, is that what you're trying to distinguish? Yes. And not just the eternal relationship, but the, um, the true person that Jesus is, is, is not understood by the Gospels. Do you all agree with that? It's not. You don't fully understand Christ by reading the Gospels. In fact, the guy in the Gospels said to the disciples, I need to go away. And they're going, what are you talking about? We're just starting to grow here. And Jesus is going, no, 
I have many things to say unto you, but I will not declare myself. So I'm going to send the Holy Spirit, and he's going to show you a whole new reality. So he knew what he was doing. He said, yeah, Jesus of Nazareth. I used to know Jesus after the flesh, but know we him no more. Amen? Or should I say, do you understand? <laughs> Are you kind of getting it? I guess verse 11, and he received the sign of circumcision, the seal of the righteousness of the faith. <laughs> you, we don't know the firstborn. We shouldn't be talking about him if we don't understand that, that circumcision is a picture of the cutting away of the flesh. So the circumcision is a picture of being able to really comprehend the Lord as he is. It is death it is a death that he suffered simply so we could understand god you know you know he is the express image of god and you get the best picture of that on the cross if jesus never died on the cross and god told me this my second year in bible school if god never brought about the cross we would never have known the lamb even though he was doing stuff and laying down his life and all this stuff, we never would have got it. We needed that cross. We need that circumcision. We need all of that. It's necessary. But on, in Jesus' heart, it's not just all about us. We need that. We need this. We need, it's about one thing, being the firstborn to the Father. See. And we will continue to... You know, let me just say this. And, you know, God's teaching us something, amen? God's leading us. He's bringing us along. We don't have it all. I don't have it all. You don't have it all. We're, but we're going. We're going after him. We're seeking him. We're saying, Father, reveal the reality of Christ to us so that we understand that the Lamb is the firstborn. Okay? Um, what I am not asking for, and I really, 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 and I'm going to end with this, I really, really don't want you to do this, is to, in your conversation or sharing or something, say Jesus and then go, oops. Do you understand what I'm saying? I don't, we don't need to be going in that direction. It's not that. We, we will say it when the Lord gets us there, and, and we're all, you know, it was a pretty big flock coming up out of Egypt. You know, there's a lot of them up here and a lot of them back here, and these were a different place than these were, you know. And um, so please don't Stick up your nose at somebody if they don't if they say Jesus because that is his name that's his name it is that the name of Jesus every knee shall bow okay but it's it's the name of the person who was a lamb you look at those verses in Philippians and they're describing a lamb but he called him Jesus y'all see it can you see that he called him Jesus every knee shall bow Okay, so as if the Lord shows you something, walk in it. Um, and don't think that if you say Jesus instead of the slaughtered lamb, I'm going to go, well, you kind of basket case. Because I already believe that about you. Not really. I'm joking on, on their fact. Do you know what they said about Never mind. Okay, can we, can we do that? Can we just stay with going after the Lord and not all right? Because that can be legalistic too. You, you see what I'm saying? We can't get into that stuff. We have to go after Jesus and we have to go after the Father's heart. And we have to go after the Holy Spirit to truly break the bread of life to us. And keep that as our focus. Keep that as our focus. Keep that as the thing that's moving us forward. And we're all headed in the same direction. And, and, uh, and we want the Lord. And 
a, a slip of the tongue. It's, trust me, if you say Jesus and then you go, oh, it's, you know, that's, that's not a mistake. His name is Jesus, but his nature is the Lamb of God. So uh, along with me saying this, don't anyone else condemn one another if you hear me go, well, I'm way more spiritual than them because I said Lamb of God and they said Jesus. Okay, well, no, you're not. You're actually the exact opposite of the first point. But Okay, you guys with me? All right, I think... Uh, I think we're done. Bless you guys on Skype. Uh, is is Mel on there? Yeah. Is she still on there? Mel, we we have been praying for you and the loss of your husband, that wreck, and we know how tough that must have been and is and will be, not just to you but to your kids. But I want you to know that we are standing with you and we love you and and. Uh, we're lifting up your arms, and so thank you for getting on here and being with us, because um, your your pain, your hurts, are our pain and hurts. So thank you. We love you. And uh, is Mike Gentry still on there? Hi, Mike. <laughs> That's my old buddy. Anything else need to be said? Yes, Debbie. Why don't you come up and say that? Or, or are you thinking you've got more spizzerinctum? You can say it. Right? <laughs> I don't know if I do. Currently, there will be no class next Thursday. Randy will be going to Arizona. And um, sometimes we switch the classes around during the week, but we don't know if we're going to do that. But um, so we'll have an announcement on Sunday if whatever changes for sure, not this class next Thursday. So. Good job, Deb. All right. We'll do some music.